Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we're very pleased to have everyone join to celebrate National Indigenous Peoples Day and also the Award of Distinction in Indigenous Education, which we um, do every year. So I'd like to start by introducing um, Shelley Moore Frappe, who is the Associate Vice President, Academic and Indigenous Programs for opening remarks and words of welcome. Okay. <laughs> Just so, Bojo, Kwekwe, Kiwe no Kwe Nadishnaka, Sadikan Dodem, Tamiaga Manishnabe, and Dunjaba. I'm Shelley Marfrapi, and I am the uh, Interim Associate Vice President of Academic and Indigenous Programs, and then I'd like to welcome everyone here today. Um, when it will be aired, it will be uh, National Indigenous Peoples Day. So I want to um, send my well wishes for everyone um, celebrating this day. And I think that um, um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging um, the territory that, that we are um, celebrating on right now, at least some of us are, I guess uh, <laughs> uh, in this Zoom, Zoom climate, it's a little bit different. So um, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional territory of the Atikamikshing and Anishinaabek, and that we uh, reside in, in, in the robinson Huron Treaty area of 1850. And uh, we are also, um, um, beside the Wanapate First Nation. So I just want to acknowledge that and it's a part of the submarine. So the Award of a Distinction for Aboriginal, um, uh, the Award of Distinction in indige Indigenous Education was designed uh, to honor the hard work and dedication of individuals and organization, organizations in the community who make significant strides to promote Indigenous knowledge and worldviews. Indigenous education, as seen by this award, can encompass broad fields of work from teaching and counseling to science and technology. Although all of these roads are important to are, are important to acknowledge, they are fundamentally connected by land and language. These are our most precious relationships, and despite being endangered by years of colonial policy, individuals like our guests demonstrate the importance of an in integrating culture and land into language learning. I would like to now invite our president and vice chancellor of Laurentian University to present the award. Thank you very much, Shelley, for the introduction. Ani Kwekwe Wache, hello, bonjour everyone. It's an honor to join you today to be part of this celebration and to announce this award of distinction in indigenous, indigenous education. Indigenous education is a part of the very core of Laurentian. I'm honored every day to be part of this institution and to work with so many outstanding indigenous scholars, staff, and students. The award of distinction in indigenous education had its debut in 2007, where the community nominated and selected an individual who demonstrated a long-standing commitment to indigenous education. Since its inception, the parameters have evolved to include a person or organization that has proven their engagement to promote and preserve Indigenous knowledge and worldviews through teaching, health, culture, leadership, technology, and language. This year, LUNAC has selected an organization which embodies the values and tenets of Indigenous education by integrating a community approach and cultural practices into language revitalization. This organization demonstrates the highest level of commitment to their work and truly empowers the community to create real impact. It is therefore my pleasure to award, to present the award rather, of distinction in Indigenous education to Eshka Nishka Bemjik. Congratulations to the co-creators, Jessica Megwanabi Kweshonis, Monty McGehee, and M. Shkwan Kwat Rice. I also want to extend my well wishes to all of you in celebration of National Indigenous Peoples Day this Sunday. I will now hand it over to Amy Kamanda for a song. Hey, ah, ha, away, hi, oh, hey, ah. 
Amy, thank you so much. Um, it's always great to hear your beautiful voice, and I think um, that really brings a lot of honor. Um, before we move, we move forward to hear from our guests, I would like to invite um, Dr. John Meehan, the President and Vice Chancellor of University of Sudbury, to say a few words. John? Thank you very much, Emily, and, and thank you very much, uh, Amy. Language. Annie, Kwekwe, bonjour, welcome, bienvenue. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. John Mee, and I'm the president of the University of Sudbury. And uh, we've been a proud partner of the Laurentian Federation. Now it's, we're celebrating our 60th anniversary of the Federation. I want to recognize the land that we're on uh, that's been done already. Uh, but to reiterate that, the land of the Atikamekshang and uh, Wanapate on and territory of the Robinson Tr Huron Treaty. I also want to recognize any elders who may be watching today and to uh, recognize the great value they have been in our communities and also to recognize the partnership, uh, our partnership with Indigenous peoples, uh, going back to the founding of our uh, Indigenous Studies program in 1975, and our relationship with our Laurentian partners. Congratulations to all of the award winners. You're doing very important work in our society and world at a time of great Indigenous revitalization and resurgent movement. And it's so um, exciting to be part of this movement that's going on in our country today. It's a fight for recognition, for justice, for honoring the people, the land, the language, the communities, the spirituality, and fundamentally is underlying issues of social justice. Events such as this help us to better see the thoughtful Indigenous leaders and educators in our midst, notably here on Turtle Island, on this territory, and with our Federation, and at the University of Sudbury. A couple of months ago, earlier this year, we celebrated the 45th anniversary of the Department of Indigenous Studies, which is at the University of Sudbury. Um, and uh, which we do in collaboration with Laurentian. And we, it was so moving for me to hear Indigenous leaders and elders recognize the incorporation of Indigenous ways of learning and spirituality into our curriculum, uh, in addition to Indigenous languages, history, culture, etc. It's wonderful to see the change in progress that's happened on our campus over the last 45 years, over the last 60 years, in fact, with, as part of this federation. And I look forward to continuing that relationship as we move forward into the future. You as the award winners are crucial to this partnership, to this relationship. 
We know that education is a big part of the solution as we seek to transform society, a society that is more ju just, a society that's more inclusive, a society where the contributions of all are recognized. And today we acknowledge your successes and we look forward to continuing on this journey of betterment, of revitalization, of reconciliation and truth. We honor a partnership in which we all walk forward together as people here on Turtle Island. So congratulations to all the winners once again. Chimigwech. Unfortunately, I have to leave a little bit early, but I, uh, I'm very much with you in spirit and I'm, I'm very grateful to be invited to this happy occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's great to hear from uh, the University of Sudbury and, and to talk about the great partnership that has happened over the years um, within the Federated Universities, within community partners. And I think um, our honoured guests today are a really great example of that. So um, now for our guests of honour, I would like to invite um, Jessica and Monty to say a few words on behalf of um, Eshki Nishna Bemjig on the great work they do, that they do. We're, we're really uh, excited to hear from you. Ani Bojo Kinuia. Just before I get started, um, I'm at home alone with my 10 month old, and he's right here beside me in his playpen. So um, that's who that's going to be in the background. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he said yes in Ojibwe. Bojo, Miguanabi Kwe Digo, Adikin Do Dam, Majikining Don Jaba, Bejik Nagan Zit Dao, Ishkanishnabem Jik. Minwa, Nuij Naki Mok, Nuij Kayak, Ozawa Gijago Ganu, Monty Magaki, Minwa, Squanquit Rice. So, my name is Jessica Shonyas, and uh, I'm the Caribou Clan from Rama First Nation. Um, I'm one of the co founders of Ashkenishnavamjik, <coughs> Miigwech, along with Ozawa Gijago Ganu, that's uh, Monty Magaki, who's here today from Chippewa of the Thames, and um, Swanchit Rice, who uh, sends his regrets. He's from Wasoxing First Nation. Um, I'm going to be looking down at my my phone so I don't forget to thank everyone because um, there's three of us that are co-founders, but there's a big community behind us that got us to where we are today. And so I want to make sure that I don't forget anyone um, because this is very much their uh, award as well. Um, so first of all, I'd like to say thank you to uh, Laurentian University um, for um, choosing us for this award, as well as Dr. Marianne Corbier, who is um, the Chair of Indigenous Studies at University of Sudbury. For, um, she's the person who nominated us. And uh, Dr. Marianne Corbier is absolutely a, a treasure to uh, the language revitalization movement. She's a first language speaker. Um, and she, she teaches, and personally, she was one of my first formative language teachers. Um, the courses and the materials that she's developed for the University of Sudbury, I still refer to to this day. Um, so just having the nomination from her is an award in itself. So I wanna thank her um, for that nomination. Um, in addition, we have worked with Laurentian University and the University of Sudbury for the past two summers. We have hosted our immersion camp at the campus there, and it's always been a pleasure um, to work with everyone. And uh, also, it's, it's good to see Shelley Moore Frappier. Um, back in the day when I did my, when I did my teaching degree, uh, she was my supervisor, my associate teacher when I did my placement. So it's nice to see Shelley, Shelley again. One second. <laughs> Okay. He wants to be part of the fun. <laughs> um, okay, so what we do, so um in the language means young or new speakers of the Anishinaabe language, and it's a bit of an aspirational name because myself and my other co-founders, um, Monty and Ms. Guanquet, um, we're all adult second language learners ourselves. And so what we do is we work with... Um, <laughs> We work with uh, fluent speakers who are our teachers um, and ourselves, we are the uh, 
facilitators of the immersion. So every summer we provide 120 hours of um, strict no English Nishnabe when immersion only over the course of two weeks to adult learners. Um, and the, the course was taught by our fluent speakers, but I think what makes, one of the things that makes us special is that the programming is really guided by learners ourselves um, and, and delivered by the experts, which is the elders and the fluent speakers. So um, that's kind of what we do um, every <laughs> summer. And a lot of our attendees are teachers themselves um, or uh, community organizers and, and language workers. So they take back that expertise to their home communities um, and their and their places of work. And um, and it's our hope that you know that that learning continues further on, kind of like a ripple in the water kind of effect. Um, so, for example, with COVID-19, we're not running this summer, but we have been providing eight weeks of uh, free online language lessons on Zoom, and that was all taught by our former um, attendees and students. So that's just kind of like, you know, it really speaks to the progress that, that people make um, when they're in, you know, a carefully programmed um, immersion program like ours. Um, also, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for uh, the help of our partners, which is Ken Gawen Tech Educational Institute in Chiging, um, and specifically the executive director, Stephanie Roy, who uh, we were just three people that really wanted to bring this program to the North Shore area, um, and we needed that help and guidance and expertise, and they were able to provide it uh, to us. So a big thank you goes out to them. Um, finally, the countless amount of teachers, speakers, and elders that we have that, that make our program a success. Um, so I'd like to say thank you to Linda Conway, Albert Owl, Bernice Trudeau, Marianne Corbier, Josh Ashkak again, Roberta Shkabe with Sass, uh, Juanita Pheasant, Russell Pelche, Elaine DeBossige, Rhonda Hopkins, Leona Nawagabo, Sophie Corbier, Martina Ozomic, Mary Wemigwantz, um, and I hope I didn't forget anyone. <laughs> um, and also, I'd like to give a big thank you to all of the attendees that attend our immersion camps every summer. Um, they are an amazing uh, group of dedicated, hardworking people. Um, and through that, we've created a strong language of, uh, and community of, of language workers, um, language workers, language learners. Um, and we still network uh, to this day. So currently, we're running our own um, like a, a little study group uh, through Zoom. Um, and that has nothing to do with the Shkianish Nabemjik. It's just the sense of commu community and the networks that we've built through this kind of program. Okay, he says uh, enough, so <laughs> I just want to say chimino, chimino. Thank you so much for, for speaking. Um, it's certainly challenging uh, working from home with a young child like that, but I think it really speaks to you, uh, how you all work, um, how you live your language every day, and so hopefully that, that little person is going to be, a, you know, close to fluent when they're, uh, they're growing up or at least doing some of that really great work that you guys are already doing. So congratulations. Um, Monty, I would love to pass it over to you to hear some of your thoughts. So we also have some questions and, and topics that we, we'd like to hear from you because this is really a special program because there's so much land-based and cultural-based learning happening. So I'm wondering if you could talk on some of those, um, those topics. Uh, bonjour, it's so, okay to go to Ndigo, Dashkanzi being in Dunjaba, Mashikan Dodam, Nishnabe and Dao. So, my English name is Mati Magaki. I'm from Chippewa the Thames First Nation. And uh, I just wanted to thank Amy Commanda too for the song. That was, that was good. Um, also, uh, I think Jessica kind of summed up everything about what we do um, within the our immersion experience. Um, so um, I guess I could get into some of the questions that um, uh, I can get into more of the, I guess, how we started piece. Uh, so we started in 2016 was our first summer 
And before that, we had all attended this immersion program out west called Ojibwe Motarida Oma Gidakimanang, which means let's speak Ojibwe to each other on our land. And that was the first time that we all, I think the three of us, had experienced um, full immersion uh, all day. Um, like as soon as you wake up, all the way until uh, you go to sleep and you have to hand over your phone and your laptop and um, you get your phone for a half hour during the evening. You stay on, on a campus there. This is in Cloquette, Minnesota. And uh, before that we had met through uh, just language, language um, conferences and different initiatives around Ontario. So we all kind of uh, went to this out west to find this immersion and it, we were kind of blown away to see other young people um, at least for me younger than me um, conversing in Anishinaabe Moen or Ojibwe Moen and they were conversing with elders and going back and forth and telling jokes and I was just um, it really blew my mind and I think for the three of us we we had thought, you know, why isn't there something like this it, we're in our area or in Ontario? And so we, we decided to try and organize something in Ontario. And that's when we came up with Ashkenishna Bemjik. And helping us with that was Kenji Gawin Tech to help us get it started. And from there, um, we secured funding uh, from... Uh, education, adult education of Ontario. So for the past two years, we've got funding from them. Um, Kenji Gawin Tech has helped us a lot with that as well. Um, so that's um, how we started. Um, we were uh, I guess for us, because we we seen that gap in um, most of the language adult education in Ontario, um, we felt that this was a really big help in in uh, helping elevate our speaking abilities. Um, every there's post secondary institutions out there that offer language programming and. You get to a certain level and for someone like me I, there are no fluent speakers left in my community and uh, there's a few people who are learning the language as well but there's not really a population of people who are really committed to wanting to speak the language and so we felt that this was a big help in our in our learning when we went out west so um, there are also within Manitoulin area, North Shore area, there are tons of speakers, tons of fluent speakers um, out there. And we thought, well, why do we have to drive 12 hours away to get this immersion experience when we could have it right here in Ontario? And we base it in central Ontario. Um, to have more, I guess, a central area for people to come and gather. And so we, all of our students that we get are from all over Ontario. Um, and yeah, so like Jessica said, they go back to their communities and kind of either implement something similar or they, they're bringing new tools that they learned from, from our program to, uh, to their communities. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Monty. It's great to hear your, your perspective and to see other work in other areas inspiring you to um, make change in this area. So I, I'd like to say thank you very much. I think it's really great to see this kind of work happening.
With that being said, <laughs> um, I'd like to um, show you the awards that, that, uh, that you've just won um, and maybe read off the, the people who have uh, won these awards in the past. And um, you're in the company of Sarah Pelche, Neil de Bossigay, Catherine Dokis Rainey and Evelyn Roy, Kelly Leah Sinoe, Grace Fox, Leona Nawagabo, Rita Corbier, Roxanne Manitowabi, Dominic Beaudry, Cheryl Partridge, Shkagamakwe Health Center, and now in 2020, Eshki Nishnabe Majik. So um, that, that stays here at, uh, at uh, well, not here in my house, but at Laurentian University. And, and as you um, heard me read those names off there, there, there were, there's, a few uh, language uh, champions on there. And I just need to say like how it warms my heart and it's um, so beautiful that, um, and I can say you guys are, I can probably bet that you're younger than me. So that, the, that you guys are taking this on and leading this. And uh, Jessica mentioned that um, um, I was her associate and uh, you know, I knew then that she was going to definitely make a difference. And 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 um, to Jessica, you know, I'm always in awe of you and um, and how you go about doing your work, um, Monty. Like, I'm also in awe of you because this this is the work that you guys are doing and what you've committed to um, is is absolutely i i have no words for because it's um it's so beautiful and the way that you go about doing it and a way you guys go about calling in people and and supporting people to do that and so giving of your time and of your um knowledge so chimmy for um i just realized that my head you've been looking at my lips talking <laughs> um i feel so awkward on zoom i'm sure everybody can uh <laughs> <laughs> that right now. So I'm just going to put it out there. I'm feeling really awkward because of speaking into my camera and I'm sitting here in my kitchen, not my kitchen, but my dining room. Um, so anyways, enough about me. Um, I also want to show you, um, give you the close up of our awards. So just so that you see it and that's, whoops, coming. And then of course, our certificate. So, so, oops, and then it gets awkward on how your spatial recognition is really trying on these. So, um, yeah, um, I think that we can open it up now, uh, Emily, to um, any kind of questions that people have or some conversation, because I think that's, uh, that's, that's uh, what people would like to see now. So, me watch. <laughs> Um, we, we've been having lots of interesting conversations after we, we looked over this amazing package. You, you guys do such amazing work in all kinds of different areas related to language. Um, and so we had some interesting conversations with Amy um, and Mary. So I'd like to actually invite Mary to say a, a little comment if she'd like to join in. Um, people's different experiences with language, language learning, first language, second language are all really relative. So I think it's really interesting to hear different perspectives here. Mary? Hi. Uh, bonjour. Um, can you hear me okay? I'm working with speakers, so I'm not sure it's good <laughs> on my uh, wireless here. Um, so I, I just wanted to share a little bit about my story and how um, my language story and how I am so grateful to the work that you guys are doing. Uh, I did not speak English till I was six years old. And of course, I was going to English school then. And my very uh, first memory of school is this teacher with blonde hair and her son, the sun was shining on her hair. And I was just amazed by her hair because it was so glowing. And she was saying something to me and I didn't understand her. And uh, then I realized all the other children were picking a crayon from her hand. So I picked one too. So now I'm 10 years old, so I'm six years old then, because back then we went to school at six, not at four. And uh, then I went to school, then I was 10 years old, and I was um, going to the grocery store with my grandmother. And she was saying something 
in the language to the shopkeeper. And the shopkeeper was just staring at her blankly. And I said, you owe her $5. She said that you shortchanged her $5. And, the, and we counted out the money. And sure enough, the, the person that's cash had shortchanged her $5. And we got her $5 and we left. And the sad part is the next time she came, I didn't understand what she said to me anymore. And so I lost my language completely at the age of 10. Then I'm at university and uh, I was speaking to Liza Mosher, uh, who was the, an elder at the University of Sudbury at the time. And she said, one day it'll come back. But one day has been a long time <laughs> and it still hasn't come back. So I just am so grateful to the work you're doing because I can go someday to an immersion camp and maybe it'll all come back. So I just want to say miigwech for your work. And I just really look forward to the continuation and the growth of what you're doing. Miigwech. Thank you so much uh, for sharing, Mary. I'd like to pass it over to Amy for a few words. Honey, get your ass in the most quiet in the house, and get condo them, nip sing and don't jaw. Um, I'm from Nipissing First Nation from the Otter Clan and I just want to say thank you for all the work you've been doing. I've um, been kind of updating myself here and there through the different um, immersion camps you've been holding and also I noticed the classes you were holding on Zoom so I've attended one or two of those as well and I think it's really great because you're role modeling and inspiring the kind of work that needs to move forward um, not just through grassroots but I think through all different possible channels we can do, whether it's like, you know, encouraging the government to actually step up and, and keep their promises to, you know, uh, help language revitalization and cultural revitalization and all those kinds of things. Um, because immersion is, is really important, you know, um, it's, and it's especially important for our youth and for children, because at some point, most people, lose that ability to be a sponge and learn their language as a native tongue, you know, as a first language. So um, I think opening up all those different ways and avenues of um, different programs, whether it's immersion or in class or uh, online remote kind of learning, all of those things I think are valuable to different learners and different ages. So I think it's, it's really important um, that we support the kind of work that uh, initiatives and, and groups and people like you are doing. So I want to say thank you, Miigwech, for doing that. And uh, I'm wondering if you can let us know how, what kind of ways people can support you and can help you. Um, I guess for us, um, I guess it's the struggle of all language revitalization is funding. and. Um, we recently had a two-year funding grant that um, is now um, expired. So uh, for next summer, if things are back to normal, then uh, we'll be needing funding. And I think part of that is multi-year funding, like committed funding, um, usually with um, funding that comes from the government. Um, it's usually one or two years at the most. Uh, which is really hard to kind of establish something over a longer period of time and plan for a long period. So um, I guess that would be that would be the main way to support um, other than um, just being an advocate for language and promoting it within your own communities. And even if you're not a speaker, um, if you have some a position within your community where you can advocate for it, then um, that's always helpful within all of our communities. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a great point. And I think we need to be creative as we move forward to, to help each other out. And so funding is tricky. So how do we bring a, a stronger voice to to language. Um, 
What really grabbed me about some of your work was, for me, was the fact that you use land and culture uh, to really discuss language. Because a book is one thing, but when you're actually making food or preparing something, it's a really different experience. So that marked me. Um, and also the, the fact that you, you know, you, you're young parents and you're really... Um, changing things a little bit, right? So you're, there's a chain reaction that seems to be happening with language immersion. And so I'm wondering if you could comment on that portion. How have others impacted you to move forward? And how have you seen participants coming to the camp uh, and then going out into the community? Are they sharing their language? Are they working with community to share whatever they learned that summer? Are you seeing a ripple effect in that sense? Oh uh, yeah, like um, we have, um, I'm just trying to think of our past students. We have at least one who, um, I mean, all of our past students are all, you know, they're all amazing because they, they put in their own time to, to dedicate themselves to the language and um, have put in the work themselves. And everyone has a different story about where they, where they come from. Um, one student we have, um, uh, Rochelle, she had, um, come to our camp in 2017 and, uh, she speaks to her children, her and her husband, her husband is learning the language as well, even though he's non, non Anishinaabe, but he's dedicated his time to learn. And so they live in Toronto. Um, and I don't know if there's any other families that they can connect with, but they're within a big city that's um, surrounded by English and other languages. And so they're, you know, they're dedicated to, to uh, speaking to their children only in Anishinaabemowin and having that as their first language. And, um, Jessica Miguelnabik um, has also um, so her first child is her son. She's only speaking in Shinabe one to him. And myself, I'm uh, I have two children. I just had I have a boy and a girl, and my oldest is two and a half. And so I have a I have only spoken in Shinabe one to them. And yeah, they're starting like my two year old is speaking Anishinaabe one. She has a mix of, of English and Anishinaabe one because our like all of us, our families don't speak the language. So they're gonna get English and we understand that, but they're gonna learn English anyway. So we're not worried about them not being behind in school or anything like that. Um but being able to speak the language, that's kind of our priority to that. And I think with other, um, with other students, I think um, other students that we've had that were younger and or that are younger and planning to have a family one day, I think that's their, their plans as well to only speak in the language to them. Thanks for sharing. It's really um, remarkable what you guys are doing. I would really like to participate in this uh, immersion camp when things are uh, safe again, because it really, um, you are all inspiring and you're doing really great work. Um, so I, I'd like to just, if you have a few words that you would like to say, um, I think we need to really commend um, Marianne Corbier for the work that she's done and the fact that she, uh, she couldn't be here with us today, unfortunately, but she's, um, a huge supporter of you and I think that means you're doing really great work so seeing her inspire you and you going out there inspiring other people to keep going is really what it's all about I think um, so again thank you to to everyone for joining today thank you specifically to Monty and Jessica for taking time away from your your family to join us and talk about your very important work um, do you have a parting words that you'd like to share with us Jessica and uh, and Monty Um, I'll, I'll just add that um, 
I guess for for learners, adult learners of Anishinaabe one, we all have um, we all carry these uh, these blocks that we have because of the history of how our language is taken, and sometimes we feel like we should already know it, and um, and because we don't, we kind of we're kind of hard hard on ourselves for that, and so just telling people that they can like for myself. Um, I'm not like an expert in language learning or I didn't get straight A's in university. Um, but I've got myself to a certain level of proficiency in Anishinaabe one. So I think anybody can do it and you just have to be open to making mistakes constantly. You might, there might be days where you have to break down and cry because that's how bad you want it. And I think all learners have kind of been through that. Um, but you're going to have ups and downs no matter what level you're at. Um, so you just kind of have to trust the process and just love the process of learning the language and going through it. And you're just going to constantly have that process throughout the rest of your life. You're going to have ups and downs. So um, just keep going. And the little, the little that you learn every day, that's, that's good. If you study five minutes a day, that's, that's better than nothing. Definitely, uh, definitely hard work, long, consistent work. Um, I, I really want to thank you for taking the time again. Um, if there's any more questions, you can feel free to ask them now. Um. I, mean, I don't have a question, but I just want to thank Monty and Jessica for inspiring everybody. And uh, we meet a lot of students at, uh, on our campus, and I'll, I'll spread the word of what you're doing. Because uh, it's, I think, from what you're saying, it's really changing lives and uh, giving a lot of people hope. Because language is the key to everything to culture, to, to, yeah, it's, we, it's, it's, um, and when I was in Regina, we had a, a language expert who said, if we don't take action now, by the end of this century, we, we might just have only four indigenous languages left. And that really struck me. It's like, this is, this is urgent. And so, uh, anything we can do at the University of Sudbury and Laurentian to support you, let us know. Uh, this is something that's really dear to my heart too. So, and I'm supposed to be learning the language. It's in, it's in my contract, but even if it isn't in my contract, I'll have to check your website. So uh, I, I learned a bit of Cree, so I think uh, Anishinaabe Mowen is next. So thanks for inspiring everybody. All the best to you in your work. It really matters. It's making a difference. Thank you. Annie, moi non plus, j'ai pas de questions. J'aimerais tout simplement vous féliciter. Uh, all my hearty congratulations um, as a former French immersion teacher. Um, I strongly believe that immersion is a, is, is a great way to go. And for your context in particular, I want to congratulate you for accelerating language revitalization. It's so important to have mechanisms for adult learners to reclaim and re-engage with language. And um, the best thing we can do is give our children our own strong maternal language. So congratulations to you for that. Merci beaucoup, miigwech. So I guess that, um that we're coming to the time where we're going to wrap up our um, celebration here. And again, Chimigwech for all of the work that you're doing, your commitment to community um, and to language revitalization. Um, and, it, and, it's, and it's absolutely our honor to acknowledge the work that you guys are doing and to acknowledge uh, how you're doing it. So um, miigwech, miigwech, miigwech.